Hi friends, this is Berberin. And if you have cancer and you don't know about it yet, that needs to change right now. My name is Anna. I am now six years into a stage four cancer diagnosis. At the height of my tumor burden, I had 37 measurable tumors with innumerable micrometastases to several organs, including breast, bone, liver, skin, lymph nodes, both ovaries, uterus, abdominal wall. Today, I am doing so well. I don't think there was one magic bullet that helped me take control of my life and my health and my body, but I do think that berberin has been a key player and I want to tell you about it. Before I do, I'm going to take one with my methylene blue, which is a video for another day. If you see my mouth and teeth and tongue looking blue, that's why. I'm not a doctor. This is not medical advice. In learning about metabolic approaches to cancer, I have read about drugs, supplements, treatments, and lifestyle changes that block and modulate metabolic pathways that cancer cells use to feed. There are many pathways that cancer cells can use to survive, which may be why one treatment approach often doesn't work. When my oncologist told me I had four to eight months to live, or 12, if the treatment was effective, I started experimenting on myself to see if I could change the outcome by blocking and regulating as many pathways as I could. That was six years ago. I did not die. So today I wanna to talk to you about berberine, which is one of my favorite supplements. It blocks and regulates eight or nine different pathways that cancer cells use to survive that I know of. It may impact other pathways too. So what is berberin? It is a bright yellow compound found in plants like golden seal and barberry. It's been used in traditional Chinese and Ayurvedic medicine for centuries. It's now gaining scientific attention for its potent anti-cancer effects. And the FDA and pharmaceutical companies are actually trying to patent it because berberin is as effective as prescription drugs. One of berberin's shining accomplishments is in its role in managing metabolic conditions. It assists with diabetes by improving insulin sensitivity and reducing blood sugar levels. It helps regulate cholesterol levels. It's anti-inflammatory. It has antioxidant properties. It helps to reduce high blood pressure. But don't worry if you're like me, who has naturally very low blood pressure, it doesn't mean you can't take it. If you're going to try it out and see how you respond, I take it and my blood pressure doesn't seem to be impacted too much by the berberin, at least not in a way that I can tell. Berberin also helps people lose weight. Perhaps that's part of the reason why I've stayed at the same weight even after extensive estrogen suppression and having my ovaries removed. It helps with depression and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It's antifungal, antibacterial, antiviral, and it improves your gut microbiome. It's basically the Swiss army knife of natural compounds. I've honestly not come across another supplement that has such a broad range of health benefits. Okay, that's wonderful but we wanna know what it does in cancer. The studies that I've seen, and this is by no means comprehensive, is that it's effective in breast, colorectal, liver, lung, gastric, and prostate cancers. If the cancer you're dealing with 
was not one of the ones I just mentioned. Just do a quick Google search with the word berberin in quotation marks and the type of cancer you're looking for in quotation marks also, and then see what research studies come up. But please do me a favor and dig past the generic information and the misinformation to actual research studies. If you don't find any hard research, I still think that with all the benefits that berberin has to offer, it's an awesome tool to have in your arsenal. If you'd like to take a deeper look, keep watching this video. I'll break things down as I understand them. But if this is just too complex for you and you just want an overview of the benefits of berberin and the side effects, here's the short description. And by the way, I'm not a doctor and this is not medical advice. Cancer cells are notoriously energy hungry and they require a constant supply of energy to continue their growth and multiplication. And unlike normal cells, they can't handle as much stress because they require so much energy to survive. Berberin disrupts the cancer cell's ability to get the energy they need in multiple different ways. That's the simplest way to summarize it. I've been taking berberin on and off for several years now. I think it's fantastic, but it's not without its side effects. It can cause stomach upset, gas, diarrhea, constipation, dizziness, low blood pressure, low sugar levels, and at higher doses, possible liver toxicity. To me, the side effects of berberin are way more tolerable than the side effects of conventional cancer treatments. And to me, the benefits outweigh the risks. If you would like to support me, please consider purchasing the berberin from the link below. It won't cost you any extra, and it'll let me know that you value these videos and that I should make more. Thanks so much. Now, if you would like to get more into some of the science of berberin, here we go. I found evidence that berberin disrupts the following pathways that cancer cells use to feed. Oxfos, AMPK, mTOR, glycolysis, NFKB, PI3K, and PP. P. Seeing that berberin can modulate so many pathways got me so excited. I love Jane McLellan's work. In her book and course, she talks about all the different pathways that cancer cells use to feed and grow and how you can block as many of them as possible in order to starve the cancer cells before killing them. One of the challenging parts about blocking all the pathways, and you do wanna block as many of them as possible at the same time, or else the cancer cells can start using another pathway. One of, the one of the challenges is that it's nearly impossible for me to take that many drugs and supplements every day without vomiting. It can easily be 200 pills a day. That's difficult for me and expensive. So when I learned about berberin and how it modulates so many of the main pathways, I knew I had to have it as part of my protocol. Jane also says that it's one of the strongest drugs in her protocol. In fact, berberin seems to cover more pathways than any other substance I've come across so far. So let's dig into each of these pathways. The first is OxFos, which stands for oxidative phosphorylation. Think of OxFos as a cellular power plant. Sometimes this plant can produce harmful waste, free radicals, which can damage cells and lead to diseases like cancer. Berberin, acting as a responsible power plant manager, optimizes this process, reducing waste and making the environment less inviting for the growth and spread of cancer cells. 
The second way in which berberine is helpful against cancer growth is through AMPK, which stands for AMP activated protein kinase pathway. You can picture AMPK as a savvy energy manager in your cells. When energy is low, AMPK is like a crisis manager who steps in during a power outage. Berberine plays a clever trick here. It convinces AMPK that there's an energy crisis, even if there isn't one. And AMPK, the manager, takes the bait and springs into action. What does a city manager do when there's a power outage? They decide which lights to keep on and which lights are okay to turn off for now. AMPK restricts the energy supply to processes that consume a lot of energy, like cell growth and division, effectively dimming the lights on the energy-greedy factories, aka cancer cells. The next pathway that berberin affects in controlling cancer growth is the mTOR pathway. You can think of mTOR as a foreman at a construction site within your cells. This foreman's job is to oversee and promote cell growth and division, similar to how a foreman on a construction site would oversee and manage the building of new structures. Under normal circumstances, this process is tightly regulated, meaning new cells are only built when they're needed. However, sometimes the foreman wants a promotion and gets overzealous and keeps building even when it's not necessary. mTOR can sometimes get carried away. When mTOR's activity is too high, it can lead to excessive cell growth and division. In other words, overbuilding. In other words, tumors. Berberin comes into play as a site inspector, stepping in to rein mTOR's excessive enthusiasm. By inhibiting mTOR, berberin slows down this overly zealous cell growth, much like a site inspector who halts the unnecessary construction. That's pretty cool, isn't it? The fourth pathway that berberin targets is the glycolysis pathway. You can think of this pathway as a personal chef for cells, preparing meals in the form of energy from the sugar glucose. Normal cells need this energy to function, but cancer cells with their rapid and uncontrolled growth are particularly ravenous. They often rely heavily on glycolysis to feed their increased energy needs. Berberin steps in somewhat like a chef at a high-end restaurant who's known for serving exquisite but small portions. It interferes with the glycolysis process, effectively reducing the size of the meals. This leaves the energy-hungry cancer cells struggling to get the copious amounts of energy they crave, thereby slowing down their growth. NFKB, which stands for Nuclear Factor Kappa Light Chain Enhancer of Activated B Cells. Oof. <laughs> Think of NFKB as a cellular alarm system that responds to stress signals such as infections or injuries. When the stress signals are detected, NFKB is activated and kicks off a series of reactions to protect the cell. Just like an alarm system that triggers the fire department into acting in case of a fire, NFKB triggers inflammation and immune response to protect the cell and repair damage. This is generally a good thing, but problems can arise if the alarm system is constantly being triggered, leading to chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation can create favorable conditions for cancer development and progression, similar to how a faulty alarm system constantly calling the fire department might lead to unnecessary water damage. I love that illustration. Berberin acts as a skilled security technician fine-tuning NFKB 
the alarm system so that it doesn't go off and set off the sprinklers or worse, the fire hydrants off unnecessarily. By calming down NFKB, berberin can help reduce chronic inflammation, making the body less inviting for cancer development. Okay, that's a lot so far, especially if you're watching me with my blue mouth. What is this girl even talking about? So let's take a little stretch, a seventh inning stretch. Okay, ready to get back into it? PI3K pathway. Think of PI3K as a traffic light system controlling the flow of cars on the highway of our cells. Under normal circumstances, PI3K ensures a smooth and orderly flow directing where and when cell growth and division, in this analogy, the cars, should occur. However, PI3K, when it's not working properly, is like the traffic lights at a busy intersection all turning green at once. This causes a pileup leading to uncontrolled cell growth and division, which again is a hallmark of cancer. Berberin steps in like a skilled traffic officer helping to regulate the malfunctioning PI3K pathway. It ensures that the traffic lights are functioning correctly, restoring a more orderly flow to cell growth and division. This regulation can help prevent pileups of excessive cell growth that characterize cancer, slowing down the progression of disease. Then we have the STAT3 pathway, which stands for signal transducer and activator of transcription three. Imagine your body as a city that's become overcrowded because some houses are throwing nonstop ragers, parties, which is like overactivation in the cells, encouraging this rapid growth. Now we have a neighborhood that's only supposed to hold 100 people, but all these parties means that it's holding 1,000 people. Berberin acts like a neighborhood watch officer who stops these constant parties by inhibiting STAT3 activation. It enforces quiet hours by reducing STAT3 activity. Um, and the officer, Berberin, helps prevent the houses, cells, from multiplying out of control, thus slowing down or stopping the overcrowding, cancer growth. And the last pathway that I have found that berberin helps to control is the PPP pathway, the pentose phosphate pathway. Consider a large family where the parents, which are the body's control mechanisms, have the responsibility of distributing food equally among all their children, the cells. The family kitchen is the PP. P. That's where the food is prepared. And from there, it's meant to be equally shared to ensure that all children are well nourished. However, a few of the siblings, the cancer cells, have developed a sneaky habit. They're going into the kitchen late at night and eating much more than their fair share of food. This causes an imbalance in the family as other children start to feel hungrier, AKA the normal cells getting less energy and resources. The sneaky siblings also begin to grow much larger and stronger than the others due to the excessive nourishment. Berberin acts as a vigilante aunt who's staying with the family. She recognizes what's happening and steps in to restore fairness. She doesn't stop food preparation altogether, which would starve everyone, but instead sets new rules about when and how much each child can eat. She also starts keeping a closer eye on the kitchen at night, limiting the sneaky sibling's ability to hoard food. This way, 
Berberin helps to ensure that the food is distributed more equally among all the children, preventing the sneaky siblings from hoarding all the nutrients and restoring balance and fairness in the family. Effectively, slowing down the rapid growth of cancer cells and allowing the rest of the family to flourish. I thought that was the end of the research, but, but then I also found research that showed berberin modulates the BCL2 BAX signaling pathway, which helps to promote cell death, which is what we want in a cancer situation, and maybe a key reason why berberin has anti-tumor effects. But I just couldn't research anymore. I've spent like a hundred hours on this video now, and at some point I just want to put this information out here for you so you can take it and expand on it with your own research. Okay. I've told you all of this cool stuff about berberin and you're probably ready to start taking it. But before you do, please let me tell you about the potential pitfalls. It's important to note that the optimal dose of berberin for cancer treatment has not been identified. And there is some evidence to suggest that it acts differently at different doses. So it's dose dependent but I was not able to get a clear answer at what the right dose might be. I take 500 milligrams at the beginning of every meal, not before the meal because I get nauseous easily. So I take it right as I take my first bite of food. And I notice that when I take it diligently, right as I eat every single meal, that's too much for me. I get uncomfortable gas. So when that happens, I just cut back. I just have it when I'm having bigger meals. This is not scientific or doctor recommended. It's just one way in which I listen to my body. Cancer cells, especially once they've metastasized, can learn to adapt in order to survive, even in harsh environments where you're blocking some key pathways. That's why if you only block one pathway with a treatment, cancer cells can learn to become resistant and use another energy source. Even a heavy hitter like berberin can't do it all. Please try to block as many pathways as possible. Of course, that's beyond the scope of this video, but thankfully there are pioneers that have gone before us. I love Jane McClellan's work her book and her course where she details so many cancer pathways and what drugs and supplements seem to help cut off the food supply to cancer cells via those pathways. If you don't know who Jane McLellan is and what her work is all about, I must tell you about it now. I had the chance to meet her recently and I firmly believe she's part of the reason I'm still alive. Here's a little video clip I got with her, but before I show it, I want to be clear that she's not a doctor and she did not give me medical advice. Jane is a survivor, a 19 year survivor of a terminal cancer diagnosis, actually two of them, where she was told she only had 11 weeks to live. Yeah, and weeks. she's a scientific researcher that was able to figure out what worked for her cancer and has been helping thousands of other people do the same. And I just wanted everyone um, to see her and have her say hello. hello. And let you know that there's hope. <laughs> Thanks, and it's great to meet you and uh, we've had great chat about all the mutations that you have and I think hopefully we might find some better treatments for you so fingers crossed on that one. Thanks so much Jane. If you don't have her book or course yet I think that learning and implementing what she teaches is life-saving. I'm nowhere near implementing everything she mentions but even I've seen results. If you're interested in looking at the book or course, please see the links below in the description and in the pinned comment. It'll be a win for all of us if you purchase through my links. You will get a 10% off of the course. I'll receive a small commission and we'll be supporting Jane's work 
while we all find ways to heal and become healthier. Okay, back to berberin. It's generally safe when taken at appropriate doses, but like all drugs and supplements, it can have potential side effects, some of which include gastrointestinal issues such as diarrhea, constipation, abdominal pain, bloating, nausea, vomiting, headaches and dizziness, low blood pressure, skin irritation, and allergic reactions. In rare cases, berberin can also cause liver toxicity and jaundice, especially if taken in high doses or for prolonged periods of time. There has been no lethal dose established, but extremely high doses can be dangerous and potentially toxic, so please be careful. To me, berberin is like Iron Man fighting against cancer. Just like Iron Man has a suit with unique technologies and weapons, berberin has unique mechanisms that can help fight cancer. Just like Iron Man works alongside his fellow Avengers, berberin works in tandem with other drugs, supplements, treatments, and lifestyle changes you're making to create a strong defense against cancer. Berberin is a strong team player, but he's not a one-man army. Berberin is a strong team player, but it's not a one-man army. Please remember that berberin is a part of a multifaceted approach to cancer treatment. It's an intriguing and promising compound, but it's not the sole answer to a complex issue. And that's it, folks. That's berberin as I understand it so far. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. I have no idea if I'll be able to answer them, but let's brainstorm together. Have the best day.